All right, two more ways of running GTK applications on Windows. Uh, one of which is you can uh, run it in VirtualBox. If you've got VirtualBox, which is from Oracle, it's a free download, and there's instructions on how to install it. It's relatively easy, easy to do. And I've got Linux Mint 19.2 already running. Uh, I use Linux Mint with Mate. It doesn't matter if it has any suitable Linux system will work. And you can see it's down there. This is uh, Linux Mint. It's running virtual in uh, Windows 10. Uh, yeah, every, everything runs the same as it would if it were running native, except it's running as a window in Windows 10. Now, in uh, Linux Mint in VirtualBox, there is a escape key. It is the right control key. The right control key and then other letters do things. Uh, so I'm holding down the right control key and putting hitting F. That goes to full screen mode. It's now Linux full screen mode. And I suppose I can... Um, Organized by desktop, looks a little neater. And there's my um, my menu bar at the bottom here, uh, how to get things um, running and so forth. All right, um, so that's, and I'm going to go back to partial or window embedded window mode. Um, all right, uh, let me see down here. Do I have it started? Um, yes, there we go. Uh, I have on the desktop here, I have Pulse BU meters, which is a downloadable set of uh, GTK code off of my. Uh, web website. It's fairly complicated. Um, it's a fairly uh, large uh, package. Um, it's um, 966 lines and it uses an awful lot of Cairo and stuff like that. All right, so it's already been compiled. Um, I'll do it again. And, okay, it's compiled. And it produces VU meter um, dash bin. Uh, and VU, I've eliminated the need for the dot slash. Um, and there it is, up and running. And um, it has a variety of things. You know, let's go to standard graphs and so forth and get this off the screen. So <coughs> that's a GTK application, and it's obviously in, in running in Windows up to a point. But mainly you see in the background here, you see uh, nothing but, um, uh, but Linux. You may not want that. So... Let's start um, an audio task here, and I'll pause it immediately. You can see the meter started to respond because this is Linux, and it does have pulse audio, and everything works. All right, the question is how to make these appear on the Windows desktop. And the way you do that is, again, you hit the control, right control key and hit L. This goes into seamless mode. And when I'm in seamless mode, these are windows that are actually part of the Linux system, but they're showing up on the Windows desktop and the Linux system's gone because what you see in the background here, of course, is just standard um, uh, Windows 10 stuff. And uh, it still works and so forth. Okay, uh, there you are. And um, if you go down here, the hiding menu bar at the bottom here is still there, but it's auto-hide, so it's... Um, should go away. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's a way. These are GTK applications. Well, this one is. It probably is, too. I don't know how VLC is written, but I think it's mainly written with GTK. Anyway, it's up and running. How do I get rid of it? Give focus to one of these windows. You have to have focus on a Linux window before you do it, and then just hit Control-L, and you're back in uh, in regular mode, um, semi-full screen mode, and I'll, I'll minimize that. Okay, that's one way. The other way is the always mysterious, uh, can we run it with Microsoft Visual C, which they kind of, um, they, they don't like it here. Their comments are not all that enthusiastic. We assume you're using Windows 7, so it's been a while since they updated this. Nonetheless, uh, it does work. I finally got it to work. It doesn't work the way they say it works, but give it a shot. Uh, first of all, you have to clone a package from GitHub. And the package is VCPKG, Visual C package. Um, you can get the Git uh, program, uh, and search for it, and download it onto your Windows system. And the command is git clone, blah, blah, blah. And it will um, it'll, uh, bring it down into the directory that you're in when you type that. So what you want to do is you want to get a command prompt and, um, and type git and go, fo go forward with it. Okay, uh, now the question is, uh, where do you want to put that? Well, you should probably try and duplicate what I where I did it, or um, 
it might be easier. So uh, my user, uh, that's users. My username is user. And there you see the Git directory. So I was at my at the top of my user. I was at my user ID level. And um, that's when I did the Git command. Now in the Git command, there's the VCPKG. There's a whole pile of stuff down here. One of which is packages. And these are the packages for the code that you will that's needed to run GTK and some other related uh, things. Uh, all right. When you're when you're there, once you've done it, you've done you've downloaded it, and you switch down to VCPKG. You run Bootstrap VCPKG.bat, and remember you can get into this just by typing GTK space Windows into Google, and it'll bring you know this would be the first link. It's GTK.org download slash Windows.php, but it's easy to find by googling GTK space Windows. All right. Um, run this. Takes a while to run. Then run this VCPKG install and blah blah blah, and it will it'll build whatever it needs to build, and it'll be in here. Okay, this is where all the stuff is that's going to be used. Um, all right, I'll get rid of that, and um, I'll get rid of this because I couldn't make any of this stuff down here work. It did not work for me. I must have been typing something wrong, or it's out of date. All right, now here, which is in my downloads, is a directory called part one, and it is part one from the original videos. It is a very simple uh, GTK application. And you can see there's the MySys um, script files that we used the other day or used something similar to them. We were actually in part seven, I believe. All right, um, part one.c here is very simple. I've removed the UNISTD because it's not recognized by Windows. Uh, all of the uh, callback functions, and there's only one here, have this G module export as we did the other day. It's, it, it's one button. You click the button and it changes the label. And here it is. Here's the one button, and all it does is alter the label to say hello world. So it's literally a hello world program. But that doesn't matter. It's simple. And that's what we want. Okay. Um, so what I need to do is. Um, what else have I got here? Have I got, okay, I'm just wondering how many packages I've got down here. And that's the other one. All right, you need to install Visual C++. You get it from Microsoft, get the latest version. They've got a lot of versions, version 19, uh, um, version 16 for 2019. When you've done that, you'll go down here and you'll see Visual Studio um, with a drop down. And there's a whole bunch of different ways to access it. The thing you want to be careful of is not to get an x86 ver a version of it. You want the x64. Now, when I went into the PowerShell, it was giving me x86. I don't know. I may have done something wrong and with the installs. I don't know. But um, you don't want to be the 32-bit. You want the 64-bit. In my case, it's the 64-bit um, native command prompt. Okay. And takes a while to come up, and um, there it is. Um, and it will say, hopefully, it will say x64. All right, now we're in a completely useless directory. It's not where I want to be. I want to be in this directory over here. So I clicked on that, and I'm going to count copy, and say cd. And this is just Control V. Uh, so now I'm in that directory, and if I say dir, you can see the stuff there. Now we have a compile.bat. Compiled up script is for the MySys2 um, system that we were using the other day, so ignore that. The only thing that's important right now is compile.bat, part1.c, part1.glade, and share, which we'll get to later. All right, um, if I say vim, they have a vim here, big concession. Um, uh, oops. This is the compile. Sorry about it, but it does work, which is a which is better than the stuff that um, that was in the web page. All right, the compiler is CL. That's just not C1, it's CL. The thing I'm compiling is part 1.C. Now, the, all of these uh, slash I uh, things are um, for the include files, the .hs, and they all reference it into the package directory. See, here's, here's my um, slash C colon users. That's my user ID user. There's the git. And then it's VCPKG, and it goes all the way down, drills down to the um, uh, to, to the uh, appropriate package. All right. So if you do this, uh, and you are going to reproduce this compile 
program. This seems to be all you need for any, any for at least the GTK I tried. You may need additional ones. There's other packages there. So if it comes up and it says we can't find in, in such and such an include file, it means you need another one. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, uh, that's where they are. And you notice the up arrow here, which is a line continuation. There's a blank and then the up arrow, or um, carrot as they call it. And that's a line continuation. After you've done all the includes, now you're passing parameters to the link editor. All right, these are all link editor parameters. It starts with slash link only once, and then it's libpath. And again, these are links down to the lib.lib lib files uh, or directories in the, uh, in the git directory. Uh, again, if it says it can't find something, you probably need another one. But these work for what I've tried. Okay, so there is the libraries, there are the include files, there is the compile command, there is the thing to compile, and it'll use the same name. Okay, so I'll go out. Now if I say compile.bat, and it did it. And if we go over here, we'll see all of a sudden there's a part1.exe and some other stuff, the object, um, some things that it builds that, um, that um, GCC builds, actually not GCC, uh, VC, VCC or whatever they call it. Um, Part1.exe, there it is. And may I help you? There's actually a, a mouse over here, but I don't, it, it's, I, there it is. I clicked it, hello world. Um, there actually is a, a tool tip from mouse over, but um, it's hard to find. And it says uh, there's a label hiding there. Oh, there's another one, click me. Okay, so all that stuff works. Now you notice these guys up here, there's nothing unusual about them, except that uh, if you've done exactly what I said up to this point, you'll just see boxes with question marks because these aren't there. Um, all right, where did they come from? They, they're in share. Where did share come from? Share's got icons and it's got two groups of icons. Uh, where did they come from? They came from the MySys level. Uh, Okay, and the MySys, if you remember from the other day, MySys uh, 64, I inst installed that got installed at the very top on the at the top level of the disk. It's right at uh, C colon, and down there there's stuff my, min gw 64. You go down to share, and you can see there's uh, icons. So you want to copy from MySys 64 min gw uh, 64 share icons and that should be copied to uh, you build a share directory and copy the uh, copy those icons copy the icon directory from here over to here where the parent of it in in, in the directory with the code is called share and that it will pick up the icons that are uh, needed to um, maximize minimize and kill so that's where they came from they hide stuff it's not part of the um, the VC um, um, PKG. You have to get it from the MySys. Or you can get it from Linux, if you actually have Linux, because the same thing is down in Linux someplace. Um, well, it's in the, it, yeah, it's in the, it's not someplace, it's in a fairly predictable place. USR slash share slash, um, we got more stuff in Linux. FGHI, where's icons? There's icons, uh, there's Adwita, and the other one was uh, high color, I think. There it is, those two. So there's another place you could have gotten them from. Um, but anyway, it works. Uh, un unfortunately, it's got this, um, it's got this hideous, well, that's not what I want. Uh, and it's got this extremely hideous uh, compile. And somebody who knows Microsoft uh, Visual C uh, can do it much better. Oh, one thing I forgot, the DLL libraries. If you do that, it uh, would not have worked. It would have given you a million references saying it couldn't find certain the DLL libraries. Not to worry, there's a way of screwing that up too. Um, again, somebody who knows a good deal more about, I'm looking for search, good deal more about um, Visual C would probably be able to fix this, but, um, but this does work. Okay, you want to search for environment variables? system environment variables okay and under environment variables you'll see them down here path is the one there actually is a way of doing this um, with uh, commands and the commands are sysx commands maybe i should have put them in don't delete it for god's sakes um but edit it you will notice down here um 
that one was um, that was put in the other day for the MISIS stuff. Um, you'll notice all of these entries here. These all point back to the Git directory, and these take you in the in the dash in the slash bin directories are the DLLs. So you got to put these in. These make it part so that when the thing runs, it gets the DLL libraries out of those locations. It's, I'm sure a much easier way of doing it. I don't know what it is, uh, but if you actually just want to run it, that'll do it. And as I said, you could um, there there are um, there are um, commands to actually I, I, yeah, update um, the system variables. Anyway, there you go. It does work. Um, it is native. It's completely native at this point. It is a uh, pure Windows application um, developed by the Windows C compiler. So hopefully that's the last one of those I do. And we'll see if we can turn this off. Stop.